Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you my top 13 books of 2013. Why? Because I've seen a bunch of these videos going around, and I thought, hey, I want to play too. Just so you know, I have reviewed all of these books in the past, and I will have a master list of those reviews linked in the box below. Now, I did have a little setback because apparently I didn't keep track of all of the books that I read in 2013, just some of them, and all of the ones that I reviewed. So these are the ones that really stick out in my mind from reading in 2013. Number 13, The Reluctant Assassin by Owen Colfer. This story was just downright fun. It wasn't one of Colfer's best novels, but it was still Colfer! FBI, time travel, a villain with a dramatic flourish, what is not to love about that? Number 12, Lost Histories by Joel Levy. This is a non-fiction, and it's a who's who and what's what of myth and legends. Everything from the Holy Grail to Atlantis to the fate of Amelia Earhart. Levy has compiled all of the information available about more than a dozen of these kinds of legends. Facts and actual events, evidence if there is any, and a collection of all of the theories springing from these different legends. This is an essential read for anyone who is interested in unnatural history. Number 11, The Magic Thief by Sarah Prinius. This is a middle grade fantasy about a clever and energetic pickpocket who becomes the apprentice to a reluctant wizard. It's a fast moving and fascinating story with an interesting take on magic itself. There's mystery, action, humor, and suspense. And the main character is mischievous and delightful, usually making trouble by trying to do the right thing. Number 10, Princess Academy by Shannon Hale. Just to clarify things, this is not a story about girls traipsing around in ball gowns learning proper etiquette. This is about a young girl discovering herself and learning more about the world and the people around her. Hale uses vivid and emotional character development that pulls at my heartstrings. And the one word I have for this book is beautiful. Number 9, Enchanted by Alethea Contis. This is another beautiful story, a retold fairy tale that isn't quite a retelling. Contest used traditional fairy tales as a basis or foundation to build up this whole new world that she's created, and the result is breathtaking. This is a love story as told from the dual perspectives of the hero and the heroine. The prose is stunning, the characters engrossing, and the story is interesting, with a shadow of mystery, a touch of suspense, and lots and lots of magic. Number 8, Cinder by Marissa Meyer. This book is about a cyborg Cinderella. If, like me, you doubt such an absurd combination could make anything other than a comedy, you're wrong! Dead wrong! The Lunar Chronicles bring sci-fi and fairy tales seamlessly together to form one of the most brilliant and unique retold fairy tales I've ever read. This has got it all. Evil tyrants and stepmothers, the underdog, a prince, a plague, spaceships, robots, intrigue, mind control, the beginning of a rebellion, and a ball. Don't forget the ball. Number 7, Hero's Guide to Saving Your Kingdom by Christopher Healy. If you need a good laugh, this is the book you grab. It's the story of how four Prince Charmings from different stories team up together through their shared annoyance at being collectively known as Prince Charming. It's sweet, with plenty of adventure and lots of heart. The illustrations are gorgeous, the characters are eccentric and lovable, and I loved every minute of it. Number 6, The Divided by Ryan Hunter. This is the second book in Hunter's Indivisible series, and the best one so far. This is a young adult dystopian novel, but unlike the other dystopias I've tried to read like The Hunger Games and Divergent, it did not lose my attention for a second. The characters have significant depth and growth, and what struck me the most about this book was that it showed another side of rebellions not often shown. The emotional turmoil of considering the consequences and having that kind of decision resting on your shoulders. It is a compelling, realistic, and at times completely terrifying read, and the best dystopia out there. Number 5, Skullduggery Pleasant by Derek Landy. All I have to say is I can't believe it took me this long to read this series. I read the first two books this year. Mm. It is about the magical underworld of Dublin, Ireland, and the living, talking, snappy-dressing skeleton investigator, sorcerer, who uses it as his playground. This is one of those books that unfolds just like a great action movie, complete with witty comebacks, sarcastic charm, and a tad of morbid humor. And don't forget the magic. Number 4, How to Be Like Walt by Pat Williams. Part biography, part self-help guide, this book offers amazing insight into the mind of Walt Disney. 
and how we can be a little more like him. I am a huge Walt Disney fan and originally picked this up for the biographical material, but it gave me so much more than that. It presents not only insight from the author as to how the mind of Walt Disney worked, but from dozens of people who lived and worked with him. This well-written, well-structured, and encouraging book is a must-read for anyone who has ever been fascinated by Walt Disney, Disneyland, or pursuing their own dreams. Number 3. The Hunchback Assignments by Arthur Slade This is a book about a disfigured young man named Modo who has a special ability and is trained to be a spy in defense of the British Empire in the 19th century. If you think that sounds cool, let me just say that the villains in these books often construct massive, amazing, astounding mechanical devices, and one of them possesses a working metal prosthetic hand in the 19th century. Let me also just say that every character in this series has allusions to a work of 19th century literature. What Marissa Meyer and Alethea Contis have done with fairy tales, Arthur Slade has done with the classics. Frankenstein, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, The Invisible Man, possibly even Peter Pan, need I go on? This is like The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen meets Alex Rider by steampunk adventure novel with a classic literature overture. Number two, Dust and Shadow by Lindsay Fay. Sherlock Holmes takes on Jack the Ripper. I've heard that this is a story that many, many authors have tried and failed to write since Conan Doyle. But Dust and Shadow is the first one to really hold its own. And I completely understand why. This book, to put it simply, is brilliant. Faye adopts and maintains Conan Doyle's style, but she manages to update it for a modern audience. There's more action, more character depth. We aren't left twiddling our thumbs with Watson at 221B while Sherlock goes off sleuthing. What's better, the mystery itself is also fantastic. And the mystery stands on its own, too, not just used as a vehicle to show off Sherlock's deductive skills. This book takes the reader right into the nitty-gritty without excessive gore. And being a story about Jack the Ripper that I was very relieved to learn. And without losing our attention for an instant. You don't need to have read all or any of the previous Sherlock adventures to understand this. Faye does make several references to previous adventures, but she always marks them with a helpful footnote and tells you everything you need to know. So if Say you love watching Elementary or Sherlock on TV, but you can't bring yourself to wade through one of Doyle's books, this would be a perfect read for you. And it's believable, and works seamlessly with the little history I know of Jack the Ripper. So you won't be disappointed. And my number one book of 2013, drumroll please, The Ever Afters by Shelby Bach. Come on guys, are you really surprised? For those of you who don't know, I absolutely love this series. It's amazing, and I say that quite a lot. This is another take on middle grade fantasy, but it's one that I haven't seen before. But what truly, truly sets it apart is the astounding character portrayals and development throughout the books. I was talking with my dad the other day about how there's two different general types of books. There's the plot-driven book and the character-driven book. The reason that I think The Ever Afters is such a terrific series is that it's both. It's both character-driven and plot-driven. You don't see that very often. The plot is wonderful and complex and moves at a fast pace with magic swords and quests and fey alongside the normal modern world, but the character development is caught up inextricably with it. That is what makes this series so unique and magnificent. That, and it's a really good story with really great characters. Everything that happens, not just the big, important stuff, everything affects the 12-year-old protagonist like it would a normal human being. Bach has taken great pains to make these characters feel as genuine and human as possible, and hard work has paid off. This is a great story with amazing characters, and everyone needs to read it. So those are my top 13 of 2013. What about you guys? What were some of your favorite books this year? Did you read any of my favorites and what did you think of them? Also, are there any of your favorites that I should read this year that maybe might make it to my 14 of 2014 list? Because you know that I gotta do it next year. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next Wednesday.